Hi everybody, it's Alex Newton from Kalytics. Today with the Kindle market trends for August 2017. So let's have a look. The breaking news this month is obviously Amazon's announcement about the new or updated royalty scheme Kindle Unlimited 3.0. But the announcement left many with a big question mark in their face, so what's really new? I think to understand what the announcement was all about, one has to rewind when it comes to Amazon royalties. Quick recap. We all remember the day and the big debates when Amazon announced Kindle Unlimited, uh, the 1.0 royalty scheme in September 2014 where authors who signed up to KDP Select were paid by download. Well, there was a little catch, provided customers read 10% of the book, but in essence, it was a pay per download. And very soon, scammers figured it out. Because in essence, you could earn a lot of money by just uploading very short books, where the 10% is immediately reached by just reading one or two pages, and the author or publisher would get the full fee for the download. It didn't take Amazon all that long to figure out that that was not a very you know, fair scheme. So in July 2015, uh, the royalty scheme changed. You remember KU 2.0, which switched to a paper page read. It was the introduction of the Kindle edition normalized page count, KENPC. And also that came with a huge debate. All authors who had, I think, roughly less than 40, 50,000 words in it were worse off under the new scheme. But the point is, also here, scammers figured it out. This time, they went the other way. They bloated the book with filler content, made extremely long content, and then they enticed readers to click on a link in the book uh, to go to the end of the book. Thus abusing the technology issue with the Kindle, because the Kindle can tell a Amazon only, you know, a location in the book, but not how much was actually read. Now, I spare you the details of, you know, then there was a huge debate where Amazon tried to crack down on manipulation of the position of the table of content in the book, where some scammers put it towards the end of the book, but also legitimate authors got hit. There was a huge, huge thing going on. I spare you the details. But then they made a slight modification into Kindle Unlimited 2.0 in February 2016, where essentially we still have the page per uh, page read, uh, but they improved the algorithm where they standardized fonts, line height, basically how they measure the length of the book, and they put a cap at 3,000 pages per download per reader. But scammers still figured it out. Because this measure, even the cap, didn't really stop them. And they just got more and more sophisticated by generating fa fake page reads or fake free downloads for that matter that brings the book up in the free ranks and switching to paid and trying to earn at the tail end. You, you know all these tactics. So I personally think the whole background to this Kindle Unlimited 3.0 royalty scheme announcement has some of the background in the whole scams. By now, many people have seen this video, which was recently uploaded by the Russian site English Russia. It shows how it looks like in a Chinese click farm. You see all these mobile devices here and tablets, and they are being operated and used to manipulate ranking social media posts. They are used to manipulate mobile app rankings. And of course, they can also be used for Kindle Unlimited page reads and to manipulate page reads and free downloads. And that's exactly what happened to a large extent actually on the Amazon site where you've seen number one titles appearing out of nowhere, you know, authors and books that have no track record whatsoever. And if you want to have a look of how this really works and where it was observed for like real books, have a look at this great landmark post by David Goldwyn. Just Google scammers break the Kindle store and you'll find it. It's really worth a read. So when Amazon comes here with Kindle, Unlimited 3.0 in August 2017, you know, what stays the same? Basically everything. It's still page per page read. It's still the KE and PC uh, measure. It's still the improved algorithm and there's still the cap at 3000 pages. When you go to the KDP website and you have a look here at what's happening with this new measure, you don't find anything really new in particular. But given all the background we just covered, their statement seems to make sense. 
they say we release KENPC version 3.0 to improve the way we measure how many pages each book, Kindle Unlimited and Kindle Owners Lending Library customers read. We're constantly working to improve our programs and increase fairness of how we allocate the KDP Select Global Fund and so on and so forth. And at another point, they said this update makes a number of improvements, including improving our ability to measure pages read for such cases as non-linear reading. So exactly what happens if a reader, you know, reads uh, the start of the book, then jumps to chapter three, then jumps to chapter four, you know, like you could clearly happen in many nonfiction books as well. How do they actually track it? How do they actually reward it? And how do they distinguish it from scammers? Now, they don't give any details about it, but at least the good news to me is this goes into the right direction of cracking down on scammers. Will it cause a positive dent in your personal royalties? Well, I think that remains to be seen. With this, let's go back to a couple of other trends here in August 2017 on the Kindle platform. In the performance race between fiction and nonfiction, uh, we reported last month, you know, we had here quite a dip from all the way from January all the way down to June this year, June, July this year, where nonfiction took a huge hit. But we see now in August 2017, the numbers have been pointing back up. So some good news for the nonfiction authors. More about this later. In fiction, the big mega genres, Romans top 100 performance, very stable up there with the average sales rank across the top 100 between 100 and 180. And currently here for the last half year, it's always been better than 140. So that tells you how dominant the Romans genre is on the overall platform. Good news also, the prices have been recovering recently. Romance prices have seen a huge pressure, you see here, all the way from August 2016 to the May this year, where we had the absolute low, low point and finally the prices are coming back up. Mystery thriller and suspense sales, also here the typical summer peak, like in 2016 here, August was a very good month. Likewise, this year, the sales have been going up strongly in August and however not at the expense of huge discounts the prices have been pretty stable as you can see here then sci-fi and fantasy stable high sales and also pointing up here in in august actually now reaching a level we haven't seen for a long while last time it was that high was back here in 2016 and also the prices um, after they came down during this uh, from this peak here in July 2016, they also seem to have stabilized here in their normal band uh, around the five dollar mark for the top 100. In mixed fiction, nonfiction, we see the teen young adult uh, trending up recently, and we will we're just about to launch our special on this genre kids book and you may have seen our recent special report on it are in their summer peak and now preparing for the upcoming uh, December peak and in nonfiction we see that for example self-help personal transformation sales have been showing an all-time high here very stable up here at a sales rank of across about 2500 and also here we're just about to launch our special for this one. As always, no need to take notes. Uh, download your free copy. You can download one free copy here at k-analytics.com slash free report of the k -Analytics basic report with this basic data on the 30 main genres. And of course, if you want to dig deeper and get data on more than 420 subgenres and up to 3000 sub and sub subgenres, come join us at k-analytics.com, k-analytics.com where you can get your monthly membership and access to all genre reports and our database. So much for today. This is Alex Newton from Kalytics, ebook market intelligence for success.